Out of these four guys, which one is most likely not to be in the WrestleMania 41 main event night one or two? Seth Rollins. Yeah, that was an easy question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you think The Rock's sticking around is what I was getting to. I do. I obviously don't think he'll be around as much after Mania for a little bit, um, but I'd expect him to be involved in SummerSlam. In a match? Um, let's say yes. Okay. I don't think yeah. Roman yet. I think I think Roman's next year, but I think that he will be involved with something. Maybe Cody one on one. I don't know. Uh, usually, this is where I transition and ask people what they are all about. But I want you to give me your UConn prediction for this weekend. Oh man, Alabama! I think we're going to win by about sixteen, and then Purdue. If that's Monday, that's um, a hell of a game. I don't know. I don't even want to think about it yet. That's the game I want. The we need Purdue versus UConn. We need it. ED versus clinging. We just need it. We need it. All right. Anyways, so The Rock. Let's talk The Rock. The Rock returned. Well, first of all, he returned back in September and had that thing with Theory, Mega Pop, over like Rover, but no hint towards anything to do with anything. Comes back the day one episode of Monday Night Raw, does his gimmick with Ginger Mahal, and at the end of it, he drops head of the table line, and the place goes fucking ballistic. So January 1st, he's back. January 3rd is supposedly when he agreed to be at WrestleMania for a match in some, in some capacity. Soon after that, they announced the Netflix deal. Soon after that, they announced he is a part of the TKO board. So he's all in from a WWE standpoint. And he's wrestling at WrestleMania as of the first week of January, so to speak. Cody Rhodes will go on to win the Royal Rumble. So obviously, Triple H, the head booker, and his team, Khan, whoever, even The Rock, is aware that The Rock is wrestling at WrestleMania. But at the end of January, Cody Rhodes still wins the Royal Rumble and vehemently points and calls his shot at Roman Reigns in the skybox. Okay, early February, we transition to the WrestleMania kickoff in Las Vegas. A week before this on SmackDown, The Rock and Cody meet in the ring. The, and Cody pretty much gives him the blessing to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Co Cody had the opportunity to call a shot via the Royal Rumble. All this kayfabe at the kickoff that they were going to announce it. And there was a lot of backlash on that SmackDown handing to The Rock, of course. Cody Crybabies was born and The Rock started getting a little edgy the day of the kickoff on the Pat McAfee. Co Cody Crybaby, all time line, by the way. And then we get the big angle at the kickoff event in Las Vegas. We get a Roman in The Rock with that beautiful looking bloodline thing going through the oral history of their family, leading to the big announcement. And Cody storms the stage, calling it bullshit, calling it a farce. And he really owns the title shot and he's cashing it in at WrestleMania like he should have. And it's, that's like the only real loose hold. With all that being said, they do a pretty good job of tying the knot to kind of get us to that spot, right? Where they were going to do the Rock and Roman, but you had Cody lingering and they kind of made it work. Do you think it's all orchestrated up to there, Mike? What are they trying to do? Do we have backstage politics where two parties are trying to swing their dicks? Or what do you think is going on from that January to February time period that I just laid out? I think that Triple H knew that this was his first WrestleMania without Vince. Yep. And he doesn't want to have the fans shit on it. So he ultimately pulled the trigger on doing what the fans wanted, which was Cody and Reigns. But let me paint a picture for you. What if Cody was told that he was not getting the Reigns match. And he said, all right, well, I'm not going to sign a new contract. And then they decided, hey, we should probably keep this guy happy before he goes back to AEW. Um, let's give him the match. Let's give him the title. And then because they did that, now Cody's re-signed. Cody's happy. Cody's singing Kumbaya. Um, he's going to win the title. And you still figured out a way from there to get Rock to – a level that kind of brought him to the heel rock is at a much higher level now than babyface rock ever would have been. Yep. In my opinion. And now you've figured out a way to put together 
however many weeks of six weeks of TV or whatever. That's been awesome. Awesome. But, but what if there was the, the overhanging fruit of the Cody contract as the reason why this got switched? No, are you assuming or are you just kind of eye in the sky in it? What are you doing? I don't know. I, I think that I am um, thinking in the, outside the box here and trying to figure out what happens. Let's say that. Because if it wasn't like my, my hang up is why did Cody win, win and call his shot instantly? And then why would he hand it to the rock and they whisper something and they have a moment and then they kind of do like a backpedaling kind of thing. And we get that weird, weird transition of like 10 days. Like they've definitely found their footing and it's a hundred percent not ruining anything at WrestleMania. But I kind of just wanted to be like, will that play into the future when we get to the end of WrestleMania? So I kind of want to bottle that to the end because I wanted to touch on it because this has been a stellar story, but they definitely had that like chapter two ish, chapter three ish, where they totally went to Paris and it didn't make sense in part any part of the story. You know what I mean? So, what if yeah, what if somebody told him? Point at Roman and you'll get what you want. I don't know. But, but, what do you mean by that, though? Like, what, what, you can, we can play a game. Play the game. What if Cody knew he was going to win the, that match, but he was going to face Rollins at Mania? Um, or maybe do a three oh, So you're punk. thinking he, at the Rumble he went rogue and did that. Yeah. I'm thinking that that's, that's an outside possibility of being true. But Michael Cole played into it, though. He did play into it. And that's the thing. But... The storytelling of him pointing at the rock, I mean, I'm sorry, him pointing at Reigns to then turn around and a week and a half later, it become rock and Roman didn't make any fucking sense. That's what I'm saying. Now, so you think that guy that's telling him the poke was Triple H and then Triple H kind of stirred the pot of the Conrads and the little Grecas and the internet swelling and be like, Hey man, TKO board, we kind of got an issue here. And that was his way of playing a power play where the rock was a hundred percent trying to play a power play behind the stage. Right. And think about that Rollins promo the night after the weekend, after the rumble, the Monday after the rumble, where, where he, he was says, begging Cody. This is the wrestlers championship. Yep. It was a compelling case. And it made me kind of interested in seeing that match, which I would have never thought, right? Yeah. So that's a promo that's in the can. That's planned. Cody wins the Rumble. And now the four days later, he's going to hand this match to The Rock. But now there's going to be a backlash because he pointed to Roman. Okay, so you think Triple H is perhaps maybe playing strings to get, you know, play the game. Because he knows the game type of thing. I think it's definitely a possibility. And I mean, Rock yeah. comes in, he's swinging dick. He's got all the power because he's now on the board. Who's going to tell him no? The fans. They're yep. the only ones that can tell him no. You know what I mean? Wouldn't rule that out, buddy. All right. So anyways, they get the awesome moment. Seth Rollins is there for some reason. And Triple H earlier at the count at the uh, kickoff show uh, alluded to heavily the first WrestleMania main event ever of a tag match. And then in retrospect, you're like, hmm, that was on purpose, right? right. So, in, so in between the Rumble or in between the SmackDown and then six or seven days later on the at the kickoff or whatever, they came up with this. Night one, Roman and The Rock versus Cody and Seth. There was not much stakes to begin with. It, 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 there was some... Kind of ways to be like, eh, there was like a little cat and mouse, but we knew where we were going to get there. They did a decent job of kind of building Seth Rollins up there because honestly, at the kickoff, Seth Rollins looked like a complete jackass in his suit where Roman looks cool as fuck. The Rock's fucking jacked out of his mind. Rhodey looks like a fucking politician, but in a good way. And then you have fucking this Joker looking like motherfucker cackling and with his mannerisms and looks totally, completely out of pocket. But he kind of found his footing, and this is this program here is probably going to do the most for Seth Rollins in the long run, but we'll kind of get to that in a second. But anyways, they end up finding themselves. The Rock says, all right, we'll accept this tag match, and we will give you what you want at WrestleMania. If you and Seth Rollins, that, <laughs> that living clown emoji was a great line or whatever he says, um, defeat me and Roman, 
Then at night two, there will be a singles match, and there will be no bloodline involvement, and you have my word. And, you know, get the lawyers involved, signed, sealed, and delivered. It's a straight singles match because you got screwed last year pretty much. But when The Rock and Roman win, it's bloodline rules and motherfucker anything can go. And I think that's the best case scenario just to play a little spoiler. Um, again, it was a little weird how The Rock presented that ma- the stipulations to the baby faces, right? Right. So The Rock whispered something to Cody. He got the match. They played a curveball. The Rock presented the stipulation to Cody. Let's bottle this until we get there. But I'm pretty sure you can step where I'm going. And do you feel that it was a little loose, or are you totally fine with The Rock kind of presenting the storyline to Cody or the stipulation to Cody? Um, I'm fine with it because The Rock's delivery is so good. Yeah. Well, but he's I, forever. I ha- yeah. Now. I have to say that Roman has felt unimportant in this build. But is that, again, is that on purpose? Right, right. Yep. But Roman's a natural baby face if he, because Rock's got to stay heel now if they do a match, right? Oh, he's the final boss. He's He's got to be the best. He's got to be. But we'll get there as we get there. So the after this, we've had six weeks of, electricity between the rock um unbel- like unbelievable if it's him attacking cody to close raw if it's him co- the rock concert fucking everything he's touched has turned to gold in my opinion he's electric he's one of the all-time stars biggest bigger than wrestling come back and play in this sandbox and really put a highlight onto this this era for uh, in leading this build to wrestlemania I'm all about it. Do you, besides the small, minute, well, not really small, minute, but it could be meaningless or ho- loose holes. They could play into factor too. Outside of that, what's your thoughts on The Rock? Love it. I mean, he's been phenomenal. I think it's must-see TV. Um, I'm the type of person that normally watches SmackDown later in the night, being Friday night, normally do like dinner with the family or whatever. I've been in front of the TV Almost exactly live when The Rock's been on TV during this entire stretch. Um, two straight weeks of Raw were awesome. Um, the beatdown, him selling on Raw this week, he's just on a different level. Like, he is just a star. His, his promos on Instagram, his pod- promos on Twitter, they're just phenomenal. And him swearing, he's doing shit that nobody else can get away with, but he's yeah. the fucking Rock. So who cares, yeah. right? He's bringing in lapsed fans. This oh, yeah. is going to be such a huge mania because people people are obsessed with ratings. Mm-hmm. WWE is obsessed with their YouTube views, right? So I, I haven't looked at them, but I'm sure they're all through the roof versus like a typical mania build. Um, There's going to be a lot of fucking people watching this mania that didn't watch the Rumble even. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Out of all the lives, I think the simplicity of off is the direction you could fuck is the like best. something that the, the something that everyone needs to bake into their fucking memory and use sometime across while anywhere. he's wearing a cowboy hat. Like who who can do that? <laughs> yeah. What all time? Oh my god! Like how has no one ever thought of something so simple but like so electric? All right. Right. And he's been like people can say, oh, he's got to record these videos on Twitter because then he can edit them. But then you see him on TV and he's fucking, he's even better. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? He plays off the crowd so good. He can turn the way he's saying things like, finally, your life has meaning. Finally, the, the rock is back. Rock the is back in the shithole. Like, and then in Memphis, he was a baby face because he wanted to be. You know what I mean? He can, man. he can make that crowd elicit any reaction he wants to by saying one fucking word. You know what I mean? He's. All time, all time. All right, Roman, you feel that he's weak. I feel that he's arrogant, and that could play a part into a lot of transition out of here. The arrogance can continue, and he could win night two. The arrogance arrogance can cost him, or the arrogance could get in the way of him and The Rock kind of meshing and button heads when it matters with the spotlight at the shinest, and perhaps it could be a lot of things. But 
when I think of Roman Reigns at this time period, I don't want to think of, I don't, I don't want to say stale. I don't want to say muted. I just want to say arrogance because he's the head of the table. All these minions are doing the rock, the work for him. And he's got the fucking biggest, strongest minion of them all. The rock doing the work for him. I like that. They put an explanation point on that saying that the rock Roman sent the rock to raw on Chicago to take down Cody in that fucking awesome. First of all, Surprise! I, I, we gotta stop on the rock, but for him to come in and surprise with with that monster gate in fucking Chicago, all time pop. Like I was doing laundry, I was like, "Holy fucking shit!" The rocks, yeah, it's been around. Like I love that. It was quiet; no one knew. Fuck it, it was so well done. And then I only bring that up, Mike, because he whispered something to Cody. Now we think it was, "I'm gonna make you bleed," and. And if this, I'll stop on the rock, but I got to one make last one plank. One long, one long full circle thing. If it was a ruse all along, I, I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I don't, I don't love it. I don't know if I like it. Could they make it work? Perhaps, but like the explanation point of the like killing them in the rain and the blood and the violence and the whipping and all that shit. That's a bit far i would kind of like you know mama I mean? like, roads mama like, roads like all that the dude's seems, mother all that shit seems like a lot a lot of heavy handedness with for the swerve of it all when i don't think when when kayfabe wise and character wise roman is so arrogant and so oblivious in a way that yeah. they don't necessarily need to go that far into it and at the end of the day all Cody does did to trigger the rock was bring up his family a little bit. Mm. He didn't even disrespect them directly. He like third person said, you're you're the high chief would be embarrassed. And that's all he said. Like, if I told you your grandfather would be embarrassed, I don't think you would go absolutely ham on me. He, and he, probably, my he would be, he, he would, he would be probably. Yeah. So uh, like, yeah. so I only bring this up. To, are we going to get this weird ruse? I fucking hope not. I think um, I think Rock helping him while well, people will be happy that Cody won. You're right. It's like he just beat him bloody a week and a half ago. You know what I mean? Like it, it just really doesn't, doesn't make sense. And does it tarnish this historical title loss? And does it tarnish Cody? Or does it make him seem like smart outsmarting the Roman because Roman fucked him last year? So mind you. Cody said the night after WrestleMania last year that I am going to destroy your family. Right. And I am going to take you down completely. He even said that at Mania. I mean, um, after the Rumble, yes. he's going to be like, I'm, I'm here to take everything from you. Yes. Which <laughs> he indirectly is, but I don't think The Rock is in the mix on this, right? Because The Rock, I don't know. Like, I, I would be, there's a couple of things about the, the actual singles match that would annoy me. Cody winning because somebody else put Reigns down, like The Rock turning. Um, I don't even care if it's just a big clusterfuck and there's 10 people that come out and, and run off the bloodline. You can guess who that might be, whatever. I don't mind that. But if Cody's going to win, I hope he does it in the middle of the ring with the crossroads. Bang. It's not after a rock bottom. Yeah. I just want him to win it on his own. And if he does it and he needs help to do it, why do the turn? Yeah, you know, like you know, you know what I mean. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah I, I, the only reason I bring it up because there's a lot of tea leaves that could could have led to the Rock fucking Ro Roman. Now, perhaps could they butt heads? Could they organically kind of have some friction of the night one, night two, where the spotlight's so bright, where the egos come and really start to fucking outshine, try to outshine each other. And then Blind Cody, tag, something like yeah. that, yeah. Something there, perhaps, but I don't know. I think that from a bloodline aspect, it's really overshadowing this match. But I think that's by example. Um, I think Cody is in a much better spot now than he was at 39, and I thought he was in a fantastic spot at 39. Yeah, I and, agree. You know, and th this whole it was absolutely the right decision. Like, I don't, you, you have no proof otherwise he is 
so red hot right now. He is such a bigger star, and that's without even the crowning yet. Now that he's going to get crowned, it's like or potentially get crowned, it's only going to even skyrocket him up even higher and higher up the tier when he would probably have just been, you know, made. And we'll see. Now it's just goddamn. The Rock's there. Everyone's there, and whatever. So, all right. So we talked the bloodline enough. We talked Cody enough. Let's kind of talk a little Seth Rollins. Um, of course, Seth Rollins was Cody's biggest adversary when he returned to the company. Seth Rollins found himself in this main event by happenstance. CM Punk got fucking hurt, and they got, they got a happy coincidence. Night one was supposed to be CM Punk versus Seth Rollins. So they kind of moved a few pieces around, and they probably had a promise to Seth of main eventing WrestleMania, and they made it work, and he still is. Is this better profile-wise and long-term-wise for Seth Rollins as a character and Seth Rollins as a wrestler legacy-wise to main event versus Roman Reigns and The Rock tagging with Cody Rhodes, or would it have meant more CM Punk straight up one-on-one? I think it helps him more post-mania than it does now, right? Because, with this result? Yeah, there's a lot. It's logical story for him to turn heel out of this, turn it on Cody, maybe post-mania. Um, when if Punk just came in and beat him and basically like a face face match, then he kind of turns heel by consequence, you know what I mean? Um, and then at that point, he's lost to Cody, he's lost to Punk. What is he at that point, you know what I mean? So, I think at the end of the day, I think that he is better off long term for what's going to be able to be done out of this story. But also because he's in the fucking match at the Rock, you know what I mean? All right, I think I think Seth has had some really strong performances in here. Really, um, I I look back to that first showdown on I, I believe it was St. Patrick's Day where he just stepped up. He threw on some big boys' pants and he belonged in that rib ring from a verbal standpoint when he, he attacked the Rock. The midlife when crisis he, line. It was when he accepted the match, right? Yes, he. Yeah, and he, from that point on, he was great. And he accepted the match, right? Yeah, and Cody, like, that was the one thing, too, that if I feel like that was going to tell a story, they would have had the camera on Cody's face, and they didn't. So it was like, that didn't mean... All right, I feel you, I feel you. Ah, there's just so much that could go on here. There's but... a lot of... There's a lot of... They've put a story together, and I give Gewertz credit, because I know it's probably mostly him. I give Triple H credit for signing off on it all, if it is mostly Gewertz. It's fucking awesome. And it could go. I you go into this tag match, we all think the bloodline's gonna win, right? But what if they don't? You know what I mean? Like there's there's different twists and turns. We didn't think Cody was gonna lose last year and he did. So I don't think we can rule out anything from happening. Especially I, because I, I called it on the stream. I said right. at the end of the day, I said a Roman's winning. He, I but, don't I can't see it. But anyway. But at the end of the day, <laughs> this is the start of the real main event the next day. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's so very you weird. Can, you can really do whatever you want here. You can have Cody eat the pan and you can have Rollins then walk out on him then. So then he's not in his corner the next day. You could have Rollins eat the pan and Cody's pissed at him for eating the pin and that fucks him. There's a lot of different ways you can go with it. You can have Rock and, and Reigns have dissension. There's a lot of different slides that can go down here, you know? So you kind of triggered something there. Big picture wise, let's think Cody Rhodes, right? If Seth Rollins eats the pin, and theoretically that could cost Rody, Cody Rhodes an advantage at WrestleMania, which could cost him the World Heavyweight Champ or the cost him the, the WWE Championship again, would that be enough canon for him to go shoot his shot at Seth Rollins' championship? Enough of a reason to go get that championship instead of the WWE Championship? Well, um, or is that heelish from Cody? That's that's heelish for Cody, but like I'm thinking more so along the lines that you know, Seth, like obviously Seth's coming in just healed off a knee injury, right? You can very easily go right back at that knee, you can have them work it, have him get pinned, and then he's going into Drew and Drew Sheamusism. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like that's doable, and then you feel bad for Rollins. But then the next night, while he's sitting there in the knee brace on Raw, he can say, this all happened because of you, Cody, and that's when he turns. Okay. 
just to get outside the box. Yeah, yeah. And and like Cody, like Cody eating the pin here. If you like a week ago, two weeks ago, I would have been like, absolutely not. That sounds like shit. Like he shouldn't pin, get pinned right before he wins the title. But if he's gonna win the title the next day, who really cares? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I, I always figured this. I figured that The Rock is going to be the one that pins Cody Rhodes. And then Cody Rhodes is going to go on and defeat Roman Reigns. And then The Rock has a it, like has some beef with Roman saying, I pinned that motherfucker 24 hours ago. I gave you everything you need. Yeah. I gave you everything you need. Now we have bloodline rules. He's The Roman slips on a banana peel or there's friction. Or I said like the egos get too big when the, brights, when the lights are bright. And then... We're setting up the Rock versus Cody at SummerSlam when the Rock pinned him at night one of WrestleMania. That's my mm-hmm. big picture, kind of what I feel is going gonna go on. I, really. And I agree with that. I think that's probably the best way to go. And then that can start to feel like Seth's upset that he lost, but he's not gonna be as upset of losing this match as Cody would. But yeah. if he like goes into his title match weakened by this match, now you've got that possibility of that turn making sense, you know. Yep. All right. So we kind of let the cat out of the bag. We assume that the Rock and Roman are going to win and we're going to get bloodline rules. Now, do you think it's a hundred percent home run? Cody Rhodes wins night two. I was on the fence. I still was, but I'm on the fence. you made, you made him bloody in the rain. You whipped him with a belt and then he loses on Saturday. If he loses on Sunday, what's he do next? You know what I mean? Now because you <laughs> you've spent right you've spent all this time making him the new John Cena because that's what mm-hmm. they've done and they've been yeah. very good at how they've done it. He can't then take four L's in a row because that's what it would be at that point, you know. You know what it would be. You you know you know it's kind of compelling though if we get the Avengers right, we get Jey Uso, we get Sami Zayn, even Kevin Owens, and then we get the Legacy Avengers: the Stone Cold, John Cena. And what if John Cena? is the one that gives him an AA and said, you're not taking my spot. You're not taking my legacy. And then last year he had to go through Brock. He got Brock's approval. Now he has to go through John to get John's approval. And then Roman Reigns is still off in the distance. Your WWE champ. And then next year we get like hell in the cell. No, everyone, nothing, you know, no one's involved. Something like that. It, it, it's cool. Like, it's the world cool is their story. oyster. It is. It is. It's doable. I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't see it. Mostly because I don't think Cena can have a great match again. Yeah, true. But man, can you think the Rock and Cena teaming up, being these mega asshole corporate motherfuckers, you know, like that's cool. Yeah, it is. All right. We're out of here soon, Rossi. Uh, Good luck to UConn. I'm rooting for Purdue. I just, but I want that game. I want that game. Yeah. um, I don't think Purdue is going to walk over NC State either. Um, NC State's got a horseshoe up their ass right now, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, but historically, those big Cinderella seeds always die in the final. Four. They do, Stop they it. do, yeah. they do. Um, but the last team that won this many games in a row to get to this point was UConn in 2011. I'm just saying. All right, U U C O N N. That's right. Fuck off. Fuck off. Zach, All right, Zach Eady celebrated too much after getting to the final four. That's my take. <laughs> All right, guys, for the ma- night two main event preview, we're going to have Tim Not the Toolman Taylor represent Cody Rhodes, and we're going to have Marcus Fuller represent Roman Reigns in a gentleman's debate on who should win the night two main event. So that's coming very soon, guys. Rossi, thank you as always, pal. Thank you, and uh, enjoy WrestleMania, guys. All right. See you guys. <laughs>